Hey guys, Cloud here, and today we have a scoreboard search tree, uh, and specifically binary for this one. This was suggested by uh, Salty Pug on my Discord server. Essentially, what it does is it takes a score, and when you play the function, it will play a set of commands, and it will find what score you have and do something based on that score. So if I have 16 and I play it, it will say 16. Obviously, tell raw you don't need to do this, but it's just an easy example of how it works. Um, now, in terms of what it actually is doing, so you have a score, then it splits it. Like, is it uh, between 1 and 10, or is it between 10 and 20? Oh, it's between 10 and 20, because it's 16. So we'll go here. Then it says, is it between... Uh, 10 to 15 or is it between 16 to 20 then you go here and you just kind of work your way down until you just have only one or two options left it's like is it 16 or is it 17 and then you can do something based off of that uh, there is situations where you would want to use this obviously I wouldn't make this for no reason for example let's say you hard-coded a some kind of a health bar so you have like uh, you want to do a pre I actually might use this soon so don't steal my idea anyways so you have like a, a team and the team has a prefix prefixes can't use the score modifier in tell raw so you can have like say a bunch of options for what the health could be and for the prefix and then you can just like adjust the prefix as it goes right so we can just Go like this and this so then what you can do is you can have like a binary search tree that says like uh which prefix do i give what team do i give this entity so that he can have the proper prefix um to make his health bar look like what i want it to be or you can it doesn't have to be a prefix but again it's just like which one do you use and it's usually in cases where you're not allowed to use the score modifier in telraw so anyways, let's go ahead and take a look at how to make this. So you go to my website, and I actually updated my website. So now there's a landing page here that just says stuff, and then there's uh, the tabs here. Then I fixed some of the clicking on the buttons. So you go to scoreboard trees, and this actually says block ID packager in the top left, but it is scoreboard trees. So uh, And this YouTube video button will not will have this length. Anyways, so by default, it tells you a bunch of stuff, and we'll go over what each of these do. So player, this could be at S is usually a good one to do, but you could do some kind of fake player if you want better efficiency or some global testing. Objective is the objective that it's testing on, obviously. Starting point is the value that it starts at. This could be maybe your score doesn't go from zero to number. Maybe you do some stuff with the lower digits. So you can pick some starting point, and the number of elements will kind of determine what the ending point is and how big the tree is. So if I pick, say, 5, and there's 26, then that'll go from 5 to 31. So now the branches is actually kind of cool. This thing has a can do any search tree size. So I can do 3, which will be, uh, I think that's called octary, um, or 4, or 5, or 6, and this will just be how many branches are at each stage so instead of picking is it between this and this or this and this it'll do is it in this range this range and or this range so it'll do three and this can help you reduce increase the amount of commands but reduce the amount of functions or uh, and try and find a happy place between how many commands are run and how many functions are run and what it, some people find is three is a good one for very big trees uh, fold results is special so there is some pop-up text Fold results has to do with what you want to do at the output. So um, in my block ID, it folds the results. So I actually would fold the results in most cases, but you can leave it blank if you want. Um, what fold the results will do is it'll make your last function have uh, like two in it. So instead of having, let's go into what the, generated pack looks like so you have these levels and you have this main thing that calls the top level so there's 26 output functions if I click fold there will only be four level uh, it only go up to L4 and there'll be 13 for the output function so basically this becomes your final destination right here um, so what you need to keep in mind is that uh, 
is that you're going to basically be outputted into a function that has two different values that could be there. Uh, so it makes things a little bit more messy. Uh, and you would definitely fold if you only have one output command like this. Uh, but if you're doing like a bunch of stuff inside the final destination, then I definitely would not fold. Uh, but folding is actually very useful. So I'll leave that checked by default when you come on the website. Because fold is better than not fold because it's less functions um, and less commands. Anyways, so then there's namespace. This has to do with like what data pack you're in. So you can make this in any data pack. So it can be in uh, BSC. <laughs> That'd be repetitive. Um, and then you have the folder name. And the folder name is the name of the folder. Uh, and this can have subfolders as well. So you can do tree slash epic slash trees. And it'll still work. So you can do that. Uh, and then the uh, commands, each you hit enter for a new command. Uh, but each command in this box will be run at the output uh, with nothing pretensing it. Keep that in mind. There's nothing, there's no execute if score pretensing it. Even if it's folded, it won't say execute if score. So if you want to maintain, if you're folded and you want to do something, you have to maintain execute if score at, dal a at s. So just copy what the player thing is. And then dollar score at dollar objective matches objective matches dollar score run. So if you're folded, you kind of want to add something like this as a prefix to it. If you still want to keep the same functionality that you would have otherwise. Now, once you have what you want, uh, you don't hit control save like I do every by habit. You click download and once it downloads, it'll just install your zip and it should be really fast it's only 15 kilobytes and it's a pretty small loop most of the time but sometimes it'll freeze so go ahead and give it some time if you need to and then you just have to go into your uh, namespace that you have for it and drag it in you can drag it in from any level you don't have to drag the whole function you can just drag from here or you can drag from here uh, and if you do subfolders it'll be in a subfolder so you can just drag from any level you need it to be in so then I go in here and it's the same as before now I'm going to go. Uh, I'm going to go slightly into uh, how the coding works on this guy. I think so, maybe, because there isn't really much more for me to talk about in game. Um, so, uh, this is on my website, and uh, it uses HTML and JavaScript to accomplish this. So, JavaScript, it's just the buttons and the inputs. Okay, uh, nothing too complicated there. This is just establishing uh, value. Uh, basically referencing all the buttons and the inputs and then I reference them later to throw them into a function. Now I do use JS zip which is one of the libraries and then I also use uh, file saver. Now with both of those combined you can download a zip file and that is basically what this part right here is for and the JS zip. So JS zip lets you make kind of like an invisible zip file uh, that you can manipulate. So zip is an invisible zip file and I can use zip.folder to add a folder to that zip file called functions. Uh, then inside that I can check if if it's folded you have to do a special function if it's not folded then you do a different function but they look really similar so I'll just look at the non-folded case because uh, it's well I'll look at the folded case because it's similar to the block ID um, so you basically have all these inputs which just gives you the information and then you figure out how many levels this thing is going to need by using a math equation uh, that is used to calculate the levels so you just take the logarithm of how many items you have divided by the logarithm of whatever tree you have and then you round up to the uh, up to the nearest whole number and that's how many levels you have then I create something that called a number line and this is going to be just a set of numbers in an array and the numbers have a starting point. If starting point is zero, then it just starts at zero. Um, so basically, so it'll just be like zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, but different elements in an array equal different values. Probably not the best way to do it, but I wanted to quickly adapt my code from before. Now, it does a loop. So for each level, you increase by one and you just increase L. L is the level. You set M to zero. Okay, so M is this invisible counter for what element you're on in this set then it gets the length of the number line. 
and number line is always going to be changing. So number line is going to have number line and new number line. So new number line is going to be built from the previous number line, but not all of the elements. So this is how we get the branching system. So then we're going to create a new folder for the sub level that we're on. So then in each sub level, we loop I for the entire length of the array so the array of the number line so however many items there are so at first there's 26 but then later there'll be 13 so the loop gets smaller and smaller but we'll start with there's 26 so we're going to move i 26 times and we're going to increment by tree so if tree is three then we're going to do we're going to start at zero and then we're going to add three to zero and we're going to then do the element at three and it'll actually just skip through the tree okay so then we uh, jump through J, so J is going to be able to pick up any intermediate elements so that we don't miss things in between I. Since I is jumping over things, J is going to be grabbing the in-betweens. Okay, so then we can, uh, this will just grab the text. If you're on level zero, it'll just grab the text and replace it with the proper um, variables, numbers. Uh, and then just save it because ends is where we what we're going to save to the file. If you're not on level zero, then you grab whatever the current number is. You grab whatever the next number is. Next being, so current is where you're at, so zero. And next would be um, like the next digit that you're going to go to. Uh, so then you there's a bunch of conditional stuff but this just creates the if it's below a value or above a value or if it's from here to here or here to here um, using this next and current values uh, and then it just puts them onto ends now the trick to making it actually eval like this stuff has to do with evaluating the individual levels but the trick to making it create a search tree of any size it lies right here with this line and this line and uh, this line and that's it. So those three lines really. So they establish it. So what I'm doing here is for all, every value of I, I'm pushing the value at I onto the new number line. So since we already established that I is skipping, I is jumping, it's hopping. So it's going like it's grabbing a zero, then it's grabbing a three, then it's grabbing a six. So only these values are getting saved to this new number line. Okay, so then the new number line is getting built up to be smaller based off of, if it was binary, it would be half the size. If it's skipping by three, you have a third of the size. So then uh, you're building up this new array and then the new array becomes the array. And then you go back to the beginning. So uh, you're kind of like shrinking number line each iteration by half or by a third. And this does cause some problems with um, positioning. Like sometimes things don't make as much sense just because it doesn't divide evenly, but it never loses anything. And that's what's important. Anyways, hopefully that was interesting to you guys. Uh, it was interesting to me to hop on and play around with. I kind of already wanted to do some changes to the website in terms of organization. Um, but if you guys found that useful, leave a like, uh, maybe subscribe. And next time I will have something more commandy in game for you <laughs> don't worry um, but other than that thanks for watching and i'll see you next time peace